Hello, uh, I thought we'd talk about the lymphatics in the pelvis today, largely because I brushed over it in some recent teaching. I'd like to understand it better. I'd like to have a better appreciation of the three-dimensional anatomy and the processes that are going on here. So the best way for me to do that is to teach it. If you want to learn something, teach it and you'll understand it way better. Um, the lymphatic system is really important um, partly because it's a route by which cancers can spread around the body and partly because it's really important in the normal functions of the body in draining excess fluid from tissues, this is a normal thing, and monitoring for you know pathogens and that sort of thing. We'll talk about all that. Um, I'm going to use some going to use some plasticine to add some lymph nodes to the model because they often aren't shown and they're often difficult to find in the cadaver as well. Okay, lymphatics. Right, so we're collecting um, fluid from tissues because capillary beds tend to be leaky. Fluid leaks into tissues. That fluid needs to be collected by the lymphatic system and returned to the cardiovascular system, um, which largely happens up here in this venous angle. Um, Otherwise, the tissues retain that fluid and we get fluid building up in tissues, we get edema. And if we're talking about the pelvis, the general flow of lymph is from the lower limbs to the pelvis, to the abdomen, um, to a couple of structures which I'm sure we've talked about before, the cisterna chile in the abdomen, and then the thoracic duct that runs through the thorax to drain the lymphatic, um, drain the lymph up here. But if you remember that general direction of flow, that's a really good start as to, as to what's happening because this is a, a one-way flow of lymph. Lymph is um, it's mostly water, it's got some proteins in there, it's got cellular debris. The reason it's interested in can interesting in cancer spread is because uh, the vessels, the lymphatic vessels, in the tissues have little flap valves in them which are actually big enough for cells to move into. It's much easier for a metastatic cancer cell to pass in there and spread through the body than it is to erode into a blood vessel and get into the blood. That said, we see lymph nodes around the body. So these are lymphatic vessels around here. They drain to lymph nodes, <coughs> which is like a meshwork of fibers inside a, a thin capsule and there are lots of immune cells in there. Um, so any cancer cells migrating through the lymphatic vessels are going to meet lymph nodes, likely get stuck in there and form a mass in the lymph node. So when you're looking at cancers in different tissues you you look at the lymph nodes nearby and see if any cells have spread into those lymph nodes and caused them to enlarge and whatnot. Um, and that's our main focus for today. But if these lymph nodes are also draining fluid from the tissues, if the major lymphatic vessels get blocked, if the lymph nodes get blocked, if you were to remove all of the lymph nodes and stop the flow of lymph, or if there was a, a parasite, a worm-like parasite that lived inside the lymphatic system and caused blockages, it means that the fluid would collect in the lower limb and you would see edema in the lower limb. And if that continues, you'd see swelling and swelling and swelling and elephantiasis, which is the most extreme example of this. And if we think about the male pelvis, um, then the scrotum can also enlarge to unfortunate proportions if the lymphatic fluid, if the tissue fluid isn't drained from it through the normal roots. And if we look at the lymph nodes in the pelvis, we'll see that there are some advantages and some disadvantages. So down here we have the inguinal ligament running across here. It's like it's where the abdominal muscles kind of end and attach to and where the lower limb starts, if you like. It's a really good landmark. And these lymph nodes we can see here then, these are inguinal lymph nodes. They're in the lower limb, they're inferior to the inguinal ligament. And we can see the fascia is still here. So the lower limb is covered by a fascial stocking. Uh, so these lymph nodes, which are inferior to the inguinal ligament and superficial to the fascia, are superficial 
inguinal lymph nodes. And these will be draining lymph from uh, more superficial structures. The direction of flow again is from superficial to deep. So they're going to drain more deeply, but they're collecting lymph from the skin in this region, from the external genitalia, the skin of, uh, from the perineum, from the superficial parts of the lower limb, from the thigh and that sort of thing, right? And there's this hole here so we have the great or long saphenous vein passing through this saphenous opening, this hole, this gap in the fascia. Uh, so the vein can drain into the femoral vein. Handy opening there, that's how the superficial inguinal lymph nodes can pass lymphatic vessels through to drain into the deep inguinal lymph nodes. And, um, that's where we run out of lymph nodes. We can't see any more in there, so I'm gonna to have to start making some, all right, pick a color. In fact, the deep inguinal lymph nodes are gonna to lead to your imagination because they're, they're inferior to the inguinal ligament, which means they're deep to all of this and I can't take this off. So the superficial inguinal lymph nodes drain to the deep inguinal lymph nodes. The deep inguinal lymph nodes are draining largely deeper structures from the lower limb. In the male pelvis, the deep inguinal lymph nodes will also um, collect lymph from the gland's penis. And those guys are then passing their vessels, their lymph, into the pelvic lymph nodes, which is the ones I'm more interested in right now. And um, it's, it's handy to think of the lymphatic flow as following the venous drainage in this direction. And in fact, probably many of the lymphatic vessels have actually developed from veins, but they're flowing in this direction. And the names of the groups of lymph nodes, because the number of lymph nodes is quite variable, so we group them together. The names of the groups of lymph nodes are related to the vessels. So first of all, going superior to the inguinal ligament, the first vessel we find here is the external iliac vein and artery. And then if we look inside the pelvis, we find the internal iliac vein and artery. And where those two come together, we find the common iliac vein and artery, which then become the aorta in the case of the arteries and the inferior vena cava in the case of the veins. And then up here in the posterior abdominal wall, we find lumbar lymph nodes, paraaortic lymph nodes, and that sort of thing. And that's what we're trying to get to. So we're trying to drain the viscera of the pelvis, these organs and the tissues around here. We want to know which groups of lymph nodes they go through before they get to the abdomen up here. And then once we get to the abdomen, well, that's, that's for another day, right? Yes, we've got Play-Doh in the anatomy cupboard. Why, why ever not? Okay, so the, the deep inguinal lymph nodes are gonna to drain to the external, is this gonna stick? The external iliac lymph nodes. Now, of course, I can only get to, whoop, I can only get to the surfaces that I can get to, but imagine these lymph nodes are all around these blood vessels and not just on the bits that I can get to, all right? So as usual, you gotta use a bit of your imagination. That's not a very good lymph node. Okay, so these green ones, these are the external iliac lymph nodes. Not only are they receiving lymph from the deep inguinal lymph nodes, but they're also gonna be receiving lymph from the, the organs of the pelvis that are probably most anterior and middling. And this is a male pelvis, so bladder, but also uterus, in fact, prostate as well, but then the prostate tends to drain to everything. And we'll see more of that problem later. Ah, quick caveat and knowledge check here though. Okay, all right, so this is the female pelvis. This is the external iliac artery. So this is where we would be seeing external iliac lymph nodes. And look how close that is to the ovary. But remember, the gonads do not drain to the local lymph nodes. The gonads started forming in the posterior abdominal wall and they descended, these are the blood vessels for the ovary here, they descended to their final positions, either in the pelvis in the case of the ovary or in the scrotum in the case of the testes. They trailed their blood vessels with them and they trailed their lymphatics with them, which means that the ovaries are not gonna to drain to these lymph nodes here. They're gonna pass all the way up the abdomen 
and drain to the lymph nodes. Look, the blood vessels are coming from the aorta and the inferior vena cava on this side. So the lymphatic vessels are following the blood vessels up here. The ovary will drain its lymph to lymph nodes beside the aorta, para-aortic lymph nodes and that sort of thing up in the abdomen, not to external inguinal lymph nodes. Okay? Same for the testes. I know I say this a lot, but students keep getting it wrong in exams and it's important. Okay, and then we have, all right, in there, you can see the internal iliac artery and vein, um, but when the internal iliac artery goes in here, it, it divides and gives an anterior trunk and a posterior trunk straight away. The posterior trunk is gonna to go to the gluteal region and the anterior trunk is gonna go anteriorly to the structures in the pelvis. And we see lymph nodes collecting around here. So these would be internal iliac lymph nodes kind of uh, <laughs> kind of collecting around these vessels is purple okay purple's kind of a cool color right and again you've got to imagine in 3d you got to uh, my fingers are stickier than the model is oh lordy i always have such great ideas don't i this is another group of lymph nodes you know variable in number and that sort of thing dotted around the blood vessels and the internal iliac lymph nodes will be draining lymph, draining fluid from tissues inside the pelvis, you know, organs that are probably more inferior and deeper. Right now, now back here, we've got the, the sigmoid colon and the rectum and posterior to the bladder. You know, so the rectum's descending and becoming the anal canal and things like that. And, and posterior to that, we've we've got the, the sacrum, right? The last part of the spinal cord, that curve there. And we have these median sacral vessels. We can see the arterial versions. And back here, way back in the posterior pelvis, we have these sacral lymph nodes. This group of sacral lymph nodes, very posterior, again, very deep, probably draining the more posterior structures, the lower part of the rectum, the upper part of the anal canal. Do you remember why? And then these sacral lymph nodes are going to drain to these internal iliac lymph nodes. So you may well just read that the inferior part of the rectum, the lower part of the rectum, uh, drains to the internal iliac lymph nodes, which is fine. It's just the same. And we'll come back to that. But just like the gonads started up here and they descend, the gastrointestinal tract is receiving its blood supply from these arterial branches and the lymphatic vessels are following the blood supply back to lymph nodes collected around the aorta, aorta at these points. So the upper part of the rectum is part of the hindgut. It's receiving blood supply from the inferior mesenteric artery. It's draining its blood through the inferior mesenteric vein which is going up to the portal vein in the liver. Um, so the lymphatics from the upper part of the rectum is actually draining, like the rest of the hindgut, to lymph nodes um, in the abdomen. But it's the inferior part of the rectum, the lower part, that is, you know, it's, it's more pelvic, and it's draining its lymph to these lymph nodes down here, maybe the sacral lymph nodes, certainly to the internal iliac lymph nodes and onwards. And the anal canal is similar. The upper part of the anal canal is, is pelvic, so draining its lymph through the same route. But the inferior part of the anal canal is more skin, it's more external. So that will likely drain its lymph to the superficial um, inguinal lymph nodes because we said those were draining the skin from out here, do you remember? Okay, so the... The internal and external iliac lymph nodes then drain their lymph to, um, what's this color like? To a group of common iliac lymph nodes dotted around the common iliac vessels. That's quite good blue. So, again, think in 3D, and of course I'm just trying to get these to stick wherever they will stick, which is not there. Go on, stick. So we're there, we've done it. We've talked about superficial and deep inguinal lymph nodes, inferior to the inguinal ligament, 
draining lymph from the perineum, the skin of the lower limb, the deep lower limb, and that sort of thing. The lymph from those then passes to the external iliac lymph node group. And then we see that in the pelvis we have an internal iliac lymph node group and the kind of the more posterior and inferior viscera are probably draining their lymph to sacral lymph nodes and then to, to the internal iliac lymph node group, whereas the more anterior and maybe superior um, viscera are draining their lymph to the external iliac lymph node group, then all of those lymph nodes are draining their lymph to the common iliac lymph node group. And remember, this is happening on both sides. And then that lymph is being passed on to para-aortic lymph nodes. And we're in the abdomen and we're off, we're away. We're joining with all the other lymph nodes and moving up to the cisterna chile and the thoracic duct. I would say that's nice and neat, but it's already not nice and neat, but there's more to it. So this is the trick. What happens in reality is that all of these lymph nodes tend to be very interconnected in most people, meaning that predicting where an organ is going to drain its lymph node to, which lymph node group, is really, really difficult. For example, if we take the prostate gland, which is actually, whoa, if I tip this over, we just lose all our lymph nodes, but it's down there, the, the prostate gland drains its lymph to all of these lymph node groups, um, as in external iliac, internal iliac, and sacral lymph node groups, and then on from there. Um, so they're all heavily interconnected. There is an advantage to this, and that is, if you were to remove some of these lymph nodes for any reason, but for example, cancer had metastasized in there, if you were to remove those lymph nodes, there are enough interconnections that the flow of lymph from the lower limbs and the pelvis should continue to the abdomen unimpeded. The disadvantage is that if cancer cells move into the lymphatics in the pelvis, they could go any which way. Um, they could go off in any direction. Now hopefully they'll get stuck in a lymph node um, like, and the disease gets diagnosed and then you can treat it before, as in they get stuck in a lymph node before they pass on anywhere else. But that's the, that's kind of the complexity and the difficulty. I think, you know, the layout of the groups of lymph nodes is quite nice and quite neat. That's okay. But that complexity of everything linking together is a little bit of a whoa. Anyway, okay. I understand it better now and I understand it better in 3D now having put all these uh, bits of plasticine onto my model. I wish I could kind of leave them there permanently now, but hey, they've got all the other stuff in. Okay, right. The lymphatic drainage of the pelvis. See you next week.